Hello everyone and welcome to the ninth video of the Angular Portfolio website course. In this video, we are going to start building out the portfolio section of our website. This will be the part of the site that you can use to highlight your portfolio. Whether you're a software engineer, graphic artist, or any other profession, this will be the part of the site where you can showcase your projects. There's a lot to cover for the portfolio page. We are going to start off by creating these project cards. And in doing so, we will see one of the great benefits of using components. We will only have to create the project card component once, and then we can reuse it for each of our projects and populate each card with different data. Let's go to our project. We're going to start off by creating a component for our project card. In the terminal, let's type ng g c project card, skip test, and press enter. Then go to the HTML template for the portfolio component. Go ahead and remove the placeholder text. And replace it with a div that has the class container. Inside of this div, let's add our project card component we just created. Let's see what this looks like on our site. We can see the project cards works text, which means that our component is being displayed in our portfolio section without any issues. Let's go back to our project. Go ahead and open up the project card HTML template. We are going to start laying out the design of our project cards. To do this, we will be taking advantage of Bootstrap's card classes, which are a collection of CSS classes in JavaScript that make it easy for us to design and layout information, such as our projects. Delete the placeholder text and replace it with a div that has the class card. Let's also give it the classes of Shadow and Text Center. Let's create another div inside of our card and give it the class of card body. This is going to hold all of the content that belongs to the body of our card. Inside of here, let's add the title of our project. To do this, let's add an H5 tag with the class card title. For now, let's give it the text, sample project. Underneath that, let's add a paragraph tag with the class of card text. This is going to hold a short description of our project. For now, we'll give it a generic description like this. And below that, let's add a button. Let's give it the classes of button and button primary. We'll give it the text of view more. As the text implies, later on, we will add functionality so that users can click on this button to display a pop-up that has more information about our project. Let's see what this looks like so far. Everything is technically working so far, but the clear issue is that our card is taken up the entire width of our container. Let's go back to our project. In our outermost div, let's set a few styling properties. 
Let's set the max width and min width both to 350 pixels. Let's check again. Our width is now locked in at 350 pixels and now actually looks like a card. We're almost done with our card layout, but if we take a look at the finished site, we can see we are still missing a card footer with these tags. Let's add those in now. Below our card body, let's add another div with the class of card footer. Inside of our footer, we're going to create a div with the classes dflex, flex wrap, and justify content center. Inside of this div, we're going to add a few sample tags. Let's see what this looks like. We now have a footer and we do have tags, but they are not styled yet. Let's take care of that now. We are going to need to create our own custom CSS to get the look we want for our tags. Go ahead and open up the CSS style sheet for our project card component. In here, we are going to create a class called tag. First, we'll set the padding to 0, space, 20 pixels. Next, we'll set the height to 30 pixels. Followed by width set to fit content. Then a font size of 14 pixels. Line height of 30 pixels. Border radius of 25 pixels. A background color of blue. And color to white. Once you have this, go back to our template. And let's add the tag class we just created to our sample tags. Let's also add margin end two and margin bottom one to both tags to space them out a bit. Let's see how our card looks now. Our card now has the look and feel that we're going for. And as mentioned earlier, one of the benefits of setting up the card component the way we did is that we can add multiple cards pretty easily. Let's see what that looks like now. Let's open up the HTML template for our portfolio section. Inside of here, let's add a row. Next, let's create a column. We'll give it the classes column large 4, column medium 6, and margin bottom 4. We're also going to set the min and max width of our column to 380 pixels.
We do this to stop our project cards from overlapping on top of each other. Next, let's move our project card into this column div. Now, let's make three of these. Let's see what this looks like. Our project cards and their layout looks consistent with the finished site. This setup makes it easy for us to display multiple cards. A question you may have at this point is how do we supply unique data to each one? Right now, we have the same project title, description, and tags hard-coded into our project card component. The answer to this question will bring us to the topic of parent-to-child communication and child-to-parent communication between components. In Angular, parent-to-child communication and vice versa are concepts that mean that we can pass and receive data from one component to another. Let's go back to our project for a better understanding. In our portfolio component, we are using the project card component within our portfolio's HTML template. This means that in this case, the portfolio component is acting as the parent and the project card component is the child. And this means that we can pass data from our portfolio component into our project card component. We can also receive data back into the portfolio component as well. Let's go over an example of passing data into a child component. Navigate to your project card component TypeScript file. We can define inputs to our components by using an input decorator like this. It should auto import, but if it doesn't, make sure to include input as an import from Angular slash core. Let's say we want to define an input for our project name. We can do this by continuing to type project name, colon, string, equals, empty quotes. We have now defined an input variable for our component called project name, which is of type string. We can use it by going to our HTML template. And instead of hard coding the project name, we can use the value of our new input variable instead. We can reference a variable by typing two sets of curly braces that contain the variable name. And now, if we go to our portfolio components template, we can pass in a unique project name to each of our project cards. Inputs to a component can be accessed by typing the input variable's name within square brackets. We can then set the value within these double quotes. Let's type single quote, sample, angular, app, end quote. It's important to note that when passing input, if you're passing in a hard-coded string like we are currently, then we need to wrap it in single quotes. These single quotes tell Angular that we're passing in hard-coded text and not the name of a variable. Without these single quotes, Angular would assume there's a variable named sample Angular app somewhere in the portfolio component. Let's pass in a generic project name into our other two project cards. Let's see how this looks. We have now passed in different project names for each of our projects. At this point, you may be able to see how we could set up different inputs for our description and tags. If we take a look at the finished site, we can see that in addition to our project name, description, and tags, we also have pictures, a full description, and even a link. That's a lot of data per project, and we could set up different inputs for each piece of data. However, that would end up being a little messy. 
Fortunately, there's a more elegant way of passing in that much data to a component, and that will be the topic of the next video. In the next video, we will go over how to properly pass data between our components. That's all for this video. Feel free to continue along to the next video. And if you're liking this course so far, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.